All right, guys, check out my shirt. It's the Nakona shirt, and it's got the guy using a guitar to beat off Satwin or Beetlejuice or Buzzle Beeb or whatever freaky thing you use in your guilt healing. Anyway, do you remember this? Have you never seen this before? This is the infamous worst guitar, and this time it's for real, guitar to ever hit the shed. It is a Bajo Quinto. That used to be a Bajo Sexto. Now, I'm going to keep this front end short, I guarantee you, by giving you a link to episode number one about this guitar in which I told you where I found it, all the history, all the cultural influence, the cultural anthropology, all kinds of other stuff that I made up, um, what kind of music was played on it, um, where they influenced that music, history, everything, go up there. Not right now, listen to what I'm saying. You can hover up there. Wait a minute, if you haven't seen what's up there now, you wanna see that first, because this is actually going to be episode number two and what we're going to do this time we already know the horrors that jumped out at us when we opened this thing up and now what we're going to do is we're going to get down the nitty gritty of documenting what's wrong with it and then we're going to look at fixing it so by documenting what i'm saying is we are going to get this thing on the bench and you can see that at the top is sunken it's not supposed to be like that we're going to calculate which angles why this is all sticking out where is it this is all whopped out right here that's because this brace right here is sitting on this what we call a brace i guess so we're going to go through this and kind of lay out what's wrong what we need to do to beef it up and the whole time we are going to be thinking about what kind of materials we can use, remembering that this was homemade. This was made out of whatever was laying around. That's the beauty of it. Now, you can go to Reverb or some guitar sales or whatever you want to do, and you want to check out the cost of the price of a Bajo Quinto. And... Um, a Bajo Sexto and you'll find out they're in much better shape than this there is no piece of broomstick glued into the neck there was no um, steal the the tuners off a 12 string and make your own nut out of a horn or something like that but you want to find out what you could buy one of these for used and then you want to start calculating where do I get the wood do I use like high grade luthier level wood or do I use stuff that I find or do I go to the hardware store we're going to talk about all that because just as with the episodes I gave you up there about the economics of junk arch tops guitars those um, stuff that were in the Christmas catalog and when you buy one for $300 and you think that you've got the national treasure and then you figure out it needs a neck reset and all that we're going to keep a close eye on what it costs to get this thing playable and we're going to pin it back together and fix it and then we're going to find somebody that knows this style of music to help us hear what the thing sounds like when i'm done with it so that said this should be pretty interesting you're going to learn some things that uh, about bracing and things like that that may shock you. There's some influences that I see here that when I say the names, you might think it's sacrilegious. I can't find my cross to whip out and show you. Where is it? I'll do that later. But believe it or not, I'm here to help you, even with guitars that you've used to... Uh, we won't get into that. Let's get into the bench. Okay, let's start here. I need to clean this off here so I can use it for what we're going to do on the Bajo Quinto. But this is a big single cutaway thick arch top kit. 
Notice there's chick flick teal chalk here and here. So if you want to line up the neck, and you don't have any carbon paper, you can basically coat this and drop this down in here and then see where the chalk was taken off and where it was left. So let's get this out of the way. Hey, you, out there in Italy. Yeah, I am working on it for sure. Let's bounce it around a little bit because it's going to look like junk anyway, right? All right. Now there's certain things that you have to be religious about and how you pay attention. One of those is the Raggedy Ann and Andy protective workbench towel. Now, let's get this up here. This thing is big, so it's hard to move around. But first thing I want to show you here is there is a piece missing right there. So this got dropped. The screws are pretty big, whatever. We are going to mix up some epoxy, some clear epoxy, like you see them making those live edge tables out of with something that looks like a river. But we're going to put some chick flick teal in there so nobody is confused. So we're going to fix that up. This neck is pretty good. I mean, it's got pieces scabbed together and that's okay. But the first thing we want to take a look at is this top is really, really sunk in. So I like this Dumac workstation. Um, it holds all my scrap apparatus that you see. And um, it, it I'm trying to multitask here, but it lets me do things like saying this is the before on this guitar, and you'll see the after later. That's why I have this workstation. So I want you to notice that I've left the strings on here, and the reason I've done that is because I'm not even sure what they are. I want to use the same string, so we're just going to leave those on here. But main problem number one is I want to grab a straight edge here and I want to show you that if I come across here, those need to be straightened out a little bit. But if I come across here and level this, you can see where's my pointer that this area right here has a gap. And it's a significant gap, you see that? So it starts out okay up here, but right in this area, you start seeing some air under that thing that's significant. In addition to that, we come across this area right over here. There is about five millimeters of daylight there. And it's even worse over here. So what needs to happen is this whole part of the body right here needs to be raised back up. So what happened? Well, obviously it collapsed. And if I were to put the string tension up right now, it would be even worse. But I want you to take a look at how massive this bridge is. Okay. And I did an episode about um, this kind of bridge and the tension and forces that go with it and a bunch of other gibberish and I talked about oil field and who knows what but I will give you a link right up there right about now I think I got that pointed the right way but what needs to happen here is that the bracing in here needs to be fixed now before we move on to that I want to show you that this side of the 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 body of the guitar, the sides bow out here. And I want you to notice that that problem has a lot to do with the fact that this brace right here, going here, that the side brace is actually sitting on top of this. So regardless of what I try to do to bring this in, it will not let that sit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that off. Now, 
I want you to notice this bracing pattern. I'm going to put in a picture of a bracing pattern, and I want you to recognize you're going to get a couple of seconds of silence, and after listening to me drone on and on, that's going to be a miracle for you. But I want you to notice this, 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 and this fan bracing. Check out this picture right now. Okay, did you see what I saw? It's not Christmas time. But that bracing pattern was the bracing pattern of guitars used by Antonio de Torres. And you see that bracing pattern in these guitars. So regardless of how terrible it is, regardless of how all the curfing was hand cut uh, with a crude knife bit by bit that bracing pattern is something that was made by someone who changed this the very style and a lot of things about uh, the Spanish style guitar and in fact I think I'm going to give you a link right up there that's going to help you understand that but here's the problem this bellies up right here and you've got these two braces or pieces of wood with square nut bolts put holding that entire bridge down unsupported right here so you can see that this is like a whoop de doo like a sand dune at Glamis if you've ever been to Glamis anyway so what we're going to do is we are going to have to reinforce this from here all the way back to here especially in this area so we're going to get rid of these things now again with materials what can we use well we can order some very expensive maple or some other thing or we can get our steamer out that we made out of a mr coffee something or other cappuccino machine that i bought at the acting women's club boutique yes i said boutique shop for about seven dollars and we can steam this and then we can take remember when i used to not make cigar box guitars out of patron boxes but i can smash this open and i can cut oh look at that ribbon wouldn't that look good in your hair anyway i can cut this open and put a patch fitting right here down to here and reinforce that this way or I could just rebuild it this way I think I want to do the whole thing so when I go to put this back together I'm basically gonna to have to steam this flat I have a couple of things that I can do I can use a jack I can use any number of things I also want to think about this fan bracing do I want to take these out and do I want to make them bigger, thicker, more stout? And if I do, this is spruce, I hope. If it's not, it's going to be. So where do I want to get pieces of spruce economically when typically a piece that's 18 inches long and a half inch wide here and a half inch wide there is going to cost you between $12 and $14 each. So I got some ideas about this stuff that I'm going to share with you. Likewise, when it comes to doing these braces on the sides and adding a couple more, do we want to use spruce? Do we want to beef this thing up? We know that any of these big things that we're doing uh, is going to change the acoustic quality of the guitar, which I don't think was that great to begin with. So knowing that is it possible that when we get done pulling out the nails that's and there's a nail there and a nail there and doing all this stuff that we might want to decide are we going to electrify this thing because it's probably not going to be an orchestral grade instrument so always keep in mind 
This box right here, if you're not friends at the cigar box store, it's pretty good wood. Some of these guys that make cigar box guitars, by the way, I did a video like a really long time ago about how to make a cigar box guitar. I had my own style. But some people claim this is good tone wood in the cigar box guitar world, which I don't think is a big deal to people like Antonio de Flores or the um, flamenco players, the finer people. So, um, I think that's about all there is I want to talk about in here. Let's move on to some of the materials that I'm going to use and then let's also talk about the back. Okay guys, I want to give a shout out to my friends at Jones Lumber Company, South Central, Los Angeles, California, cultural capital world. Now, why am I showing you this? I told you a minute ago that there are some places that for these braces of spruce, that's the finest, I'll give you that. But for a piece this long, yeah, see that? And this wide and this tall, you're gonna pay 12 or $14 for one. Okay, I want to show you something else. Have you ever seen 36 feet of spruce cut into four inch slabs, four inch wide, one inch thick? Yeah, this is what it looks like. This did not cost me $14 for a shard. This whole thing cost me about $35 with all the cuts. I have every kind of brace I will never ever need for all the junk that I build and you've seen some of the worst. Let's talk about the Galliano junk pile. Let's click that one. I think that's all my cards. We don't have to worry about that. So, I can unpackage that stuff. I'm going to keep it flat. I'm going to clamp it together and store it in the right humidity and all that. But I can take a piece of that and literally cut a hundred braces out of one piece that's three feet long, four inches wide, and one inch thick. I can get a lot of braces here. Is it going to ruin the tonal quality of this guitar? I will leave that up to you. Next. Okay, guys, this is the back of the guitar. Nice brace work. I think we might be able to replace this, but yeah, we're going to replace this. We're going to use new braces. We're actually going to take that off of there because it used to be here. But look at this. Here's the problem with the way this guitar was made. There is no binding. They let the sides come up. They put what appears to be some type of furring strip here, glued it down the sides enough, and then cut the back where it sits down in there. It kind of gives the illusion that there's binding. There is no binding. We need to replace this. Look at it. The grain, this is not tight grain. This is not mahogany. This is not spruce. This is not hand carved. I think this is accounts for the hole in the side of the barn or the goat shed or whatever it is. It is tore up from the floor up. I actually like this branch world because I was thinking I could take a spent 45 casing, knock that out, put there and make this very rustic. But this has to be replaced. So I was thinking I could get one of those uh, book ended pieces of spruce for how much? About a hundred dollars. And, and then I could put that in, no. Remember, we're talking about saving money on an instrument that, I mean, do you think the tonal quality of this was good? What about this brace, you like that? This is an Olympic diving board in the land of the Giants. Remember that show? Anyway, I want to show you something pretty cool. Again, my friends, I'm not sure if they're my friends. They 
they seem to be nice when I'm looking at them. But my friends at Jones Lumber, Los Angeles, California, Culture Capital World, will save your day. When you buy a piece of one eighth inch Luan, I can't even get this in the camera. There's so much of it. You buy one four by eight sheet of this stuff and you have them cut it into two foot pieces with the grain. Can you see that? You can't even see the beginning and where it ends. You see all that. You know what this cost me? Certainly not about a hundred dollars, but all four of these pieces that I can make easily. Three guitar backs, one, two, three. I got all this cut, brought out to me, to my car, because I couldn't put plywood in my car. Four, ready for this? Less than $30 I have. 12 junky guitar backs right here for less than $30. Again, point of the matter here is I can cut a new back out of this. It's not going to affect the tonal quality. How do I know that? Well, Mr. De Torres that I told you about, Mr. Antonio De Torres actually made a guitar that the sides and the back were made out of paper mache to prove the point that the soundboard of the top was what really mattered. Now there are some things that I am going to use standard stuff. I have some um, kerfing um, coming in and what we are going to do is we are going to trim this down. This part is going to be our grade up here. We're going to scrape this off and anything that's sticking up here we are going to trim that down and get this all nice and flat and then once we get everything pulled off where there's things not fighting each other we're going to get this back into shape then when we cut the top the top is going to sit on the kerfing that we put right here so we're actually going to put a whole layer of kerfing in here to beef this up we are going to mimic the spots where the bracing was here. We're going to trim all that down and we're going to get rid of some of this stuff. But we're going to keep everything where it was except for we're going to reinforce this. We are going to put in new spruce cleats that are substantially beefier and we are going to reap this back into shape. And I'm going to give you a couple clips of me doing that along the way. You know what? This is going to be terrible. Um, if you are a professional Lutherism, you don't want to see this. This is how we do it, where ignorance is king. Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit about the economics of wood here. I am going to have to replace these braces. This brace, I'm going to use inches now, is right at 15 inches long. And I've got this good spruce. It's no knots in it or anything. It's, it's great. Grain is good and everything. This piece is about 20 inches long. And it is typical inch size. Two pieces of these, about $20. This is out of a lumber yard. Now, there are some knots and branch whorls and stuff in it but it's an inch and I had these cut down to three feet long because they were in 16 feet length so if I take this and come to 18 inches I'm going to be in in the middle there and so I'm a tad under the 20 inches but the thing about it is I have 10 pieces of this like this. Now I can cut this in the middle. I got plenty of room over there to cut this. And then I can take the bandsaw and take this little caliper here and I can measure how wide the brace needs to be. And then I can just run that 
like so and set my bandsaw after I cut it in half and cut a ton of these strips like this and get them within range. Again, I can use, I can make 20 inch strips, 24 inch strips or whatever, but this is a quick way to blow out a lot of bracing and I'm going to do that right now. Also, if you need some bracing that runs up the side of a guitar or something that you need to reinforce a side that's split or you got a hole in the guitar, you can simply cut this way in thin strips and then round those off with the radius of the side of the guitar. And I'm going to do a couple of those right now for different projects we're working on. But economically, especially if you're doing just junk arch tops like I usually do, I wouldn't recommend putting this inside of a uh, 1920 Gibson Mando base, uh, but you might want to go that way. But this is certainly an economical choice for people like me that are just building junk. Okay, let's talk about the back. Um, I am going to replace this. It's not that great of a piece of wood. I found a piece of uh, two by two birch quarter inch plywood that appears to be pretty good and I'm going to give myself plenty of room around the edge here but I'm simply going to trace this out and then we're just going to cut outside the line and of course that that piece right there was missing but we're just going to cut this out. Got this little cutaway up here, which is pretty cool. But there we go. We're going to go to a bandsaw now and um, cut that out. Let's see if we can match up that side there. Well, we'll just do it free handed. But anyway, we're just going to come out about this far and that'll let us compensate if the body needs to come out for what's going to end up being our binding configuration whatever that might be Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit about the economics of wood here. I am going to have to replace these braces. This brace, I'm going to use inches now, is right at 15 inches long. And I've got this good spruce. There's no knots in it or anything. It's, it's great. Grain is good and everything. This piece is about 20 inches long. And it is typical inch size two pieces of these about twenty dollars this is out of a yump lumber yard now there are some knots and branch whorls and stuff in it but it's an inch and I had these cut down to three feet long because they were in 16 feet length so if I take this and come to 18 inches I'm gonna be in in the middle there and so I'm a tad under the 20 inches but the thing about it is I have 10 pieces of this like this now I can cut this in the middle I got plenty of room over there to cut this and then I can take the bandsaw and take this little caliper here and I can measure how wide the brace needs to be and then I can just run that like so and set my bandsaw after I cut it in half and cut a ton of these strips like this and get them within range again I can use I can make 20 inch strips 24 inch strips or whatever but this is a quick way to blow out a lot of bracing and I'm going to do that right now also if you need 
some bracing that runs up the side of a guitar or something that you need to reinforce a side that's split or you got a hole in the guitar, you can simply cut this way in thin strips and then round those off with the radius of the side of the guitar. And I'm going to do a couple of those right now for different project we're working on. But economically, especially if you're doing just junk arch tops like I usually do, I wouldn't recommend putting this inside of a uh, 1920 Gibson Mando base, uh, but you might want to go that way. But this is certainly an economical choice for people like me that are just building junk. All right, I think we're in a pretty good spot here. Maybe it's a little close, but do you see this brace here? The braces in this guitar are just bad. I don't know what this glue is. When you when you sand the edges of these braces off, they're terrible. So you want to use a some protection when you are popping these off. And we're going to use one of these up here for a template. Now, bandsaws are cool things, but Sometimes they're a hassle because the blade is wobbly and you, and you have to set things and all this and that kind of thing. So, but they are pretty readily available at secondhand stores and that kind of thing and yard sales and, and all that. Clouds are starting to get low. It's getting humid. You can hear the airplane jets or just really airplanes. Anyway, get yourself a dusk mask like this one that I had made for my channel. Yeah, anyway, don't be breathing this Tootin' Commons guitar dust. Anyway, I want to show you a couple of things. We've told you that these desktop um, band saws are pretty economical secondhand make sure they work this one has a variable speed adjustment from 300 to 3,000 feet per minute it's got a pull on and off switch and so here's kind of what you do you take one of the braces take it over to your sander heat it up I've got granny's iron going on where are we at down here you see that? I got Granny's iron with some different, where are we? We're not low enough there. There we go. Granny's iron under or on top of these pallet knives. That's how we're heating up the glue and that's how this comes off cleanly. Now, let's get back up here. Okay. So I got this nice and clean. Now we want to get a piece that's long enough to where we can judge how it is. And then we want to get one of these straight edge clamps. You see how this works? This part up here will wiggle a little bit. It is adjustable by pulling this in back and forth and then it's got this thing on the end. So what I do is I set this on here and then I move this over until I can see that band right there. Where is it? Right here, bowing out just a little bit. And I want to make it just a little bit bigger because wherever you're gluing, you're going to be able to see the old glue marks. You'll be able to get rid of those and put the new brace on top and it's just a tad bigger so it'll cover everything. So then once everything is straight, I just lock this down like so. And what do you know? Got a little bit of slop right there. But then I can take ooh, uh, some fine spruce and I can just set it on here like this and just feed it through. Now. I do a bunch of these, so I get a bunch of strips. I want to know how thick they need to be, so once that's done, 
or I could even raise this up here and start going this way or cut a few like this and then turn them over but the easy thing to do is to get one of these set up where you've got repetitive tasks that you do all the time and if you're going to be redoing arch tops and this kind of thing you are going to be cutting bracing so yard sale wait a minute union complaint yard sale bandsaw make sure that the the blades for these things are available and make sure the the blade uh teeth per inch or whatever you want to call it are what you need so it's not making really rough cuts and, and it's not so small that it's not able to cut a little bit thicker wood but anyway know what your blade replacement blade um, availability is before you buy one just jump on the internet at the yard sale they probably have connection which, unless you're in non-stop action acting california cultural capital world which there are none over here don't even bother and then you can get one of these cutting clamps and you can do all kinds of bracing okay the next thing i want to show you is this wonderful bridge it has a flat headed bolt right there and one underneath here and this thing is caved in i think i've shown you before let me see if i've got a dowel you know what yeah i do have one it's called chick flick teal pointer if we put this over here look at how much air guess what chick flick teal pointer you worked yourself into a corner look at that this is sunk in really really bad to the point where if i grab metric ruler we're going to find out that it is sunk oh about 12 millimeters it has to come up there so that involves rebracing some things and one of those things is to put something in here that's not just a piece of giant wood supported by a couple things in the back that are grossly inadequate kind of like my luthiers and the skills yeah, there we go i think we can make that work right there i love this workstation yeah so believe it or not this is the existing bridge plate here's those screws and we were talking about making bracing and these smaller braces are going to get larger when we redo those um, this stuff is going to get replaced this here there's a crack right there there's all kinds of stuff to do here but in order to make this part come up we are going to have to brace this better and we're going to need a bigger bridge plate so i've got a piece of maple or two here and it is big enough to create a bridge plate that i'm going to shape it as big as the bridge on top and then i'm going to place it right in here and we're going to get rid of this and we're going to steam this and we're going to clamp it and we're going to get this nice and flat we are going to replace these and some of these are going to need to be modified because there is going to be a huge bridge plate right in this area so this fan, fan bracing will exist but it will cut off and tie in right in here these will be fine just different and then this configuration will be changed but this is how we are going to beef up the bridge plate and replace binding with a good piece of maple while we are here there is a crack right there because this was sitting on top of here and we've got some chick flick teal fabric to glue once we get everything back into place so i think we're pretty good to close this episode out because i've told you just about all the materials you will need 
Okay, guys, we're going to close this one out right here. And I hope the lesson you have learned is that when you got something junky like this, let's get tricky. You do not need to hit the panic button. Let's recap, shall we? In the playlist that's up there right now, there's going to be two episodes, including this one. The first one explained the history of this, where I got it, what the influences were, everything for you to still lose on Jeopardy. This episode, we talked about all the nasty stuff that's growing in here and what we need to do to make this thing structurally sound. It will probably make a, never make another sound, but it will be structurally sound. So let's recap. We got a piece of birch to make a new back. We got a pile of mess on the floor now. We got some spruce. We cut it down ourselves. We know how to make these braces. And finally, we know how to take a piece of maple and put it in here so it has a normal bridge plate instead of these things. We learned something about this bracing pattern. Wasn't that cool? But anyway, back to the maple. We are going to make a bridge plate that goes underneath that will support this big thing and then we are going to actually work on this in the next episode and i'm going to show you how to do all this stuff with the materials that we have reviewed in this episode there's one thing that i think i forgot oh wait a minute do you see a historical an historical. Remember, an instead of a in front of a e i o u and h, Mr. H. Anyway, do you see the pit guard? No, you don't. Do you see where the pit guard used to be? Right there. Do you see it? It's kind of square. Where do you get a pit guard like that? <laughs> Well, you snag it off of a motorcycle from Sonora, Mexico, and you put it right here because this is, yeah, na 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 na, a bajo cuisto. Pretty slick. I'm still Palmiro John Powell guitars, and don't you forget it. I'll see you next time. <sighs> Am I really going to be able to do this? Yeah, I know you're still there. Of course I'm going to be able to do it. I've messed up much better guitars than this one. Anyway, I will see you soon.